Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. In this week's Women in Astronomy, we are going to talk about Carolyn Shoemaker and look at her contributions to astronomy. So let's go ahead and get started here. And she was born in New Mexico and lived from 1929 to 2021. Now you'll find interestingly her degrees are in history, political science and literature quite a ways from astronomy. But her husband encouraged her work in astronomy. And she ended up doing a lot of that actually not even really starting her astronomical career until 1980. And at that point, what she was doing was searching for Earth crossing asteroids. Now these are called near Earth asteroids, asteroids that cross Earth's orbit. So these are the ones that are potential hazards to Earth and could someday strike us. Now the odds of any individual asteroid striking us, even if it's crossing Earth's orbit, are incredibly small. And that's because Earth is very tiny in the sense of space. So it presents a very small cross section for these asteroids asteroids and in fact they'd have to be lined up almost precisely with Earth in order to strike us. However when we look over millions and then billions of years eventually those are going to hit. So over long time frames they are something that will strike and will hit Earth. So what she would do to look for some of these was use what is called a stereoscope. Now a stereoscope lets you look at two images taken at different times simultaneously and blink you can blink between them and see if anything moves. Well the stars if everything's lined up will be in exactly the same spot. The stars don't move significantly over the course of say a year or so. But closer objects such as comets and asteroids will move. So we looked for objects that were moving relative to those background stars. And she discovered this way dozens of comets and hundreds of asteroids. Now one of the things that she is known for is a comet that bears her name and comets are named after the person who first discovers them. So when a comet is discovered, sometimes it's one person, sometimes it could be more than one. In this case, it's comet Shoemaker Levy 9, which impacted with Jupiter in 1993. Now we can take a look at that here. And this is part of that comet here. And we can see different images. The first image shows what we look at from Earth. The second image shows the Hubble Space Telescope view, seeing how it has been broken apart into all these different little pieces. So there's the Hubble view. And then again, we see a zoomed up view looking just towards the brightest portions there. So the comet had split apart and then headed toward Jupiter. Well, it actually was on a collision course, so a precise collision course, and actually struck Jupiter in 1993. And we can see that here. The parts that struck Jupiter made these very dark impacts on the surface, or I should say in the atmosphere of Jupiter. So that's where what happened to the comet. All those different little pieces struck at various different places across the surface of Jupiter. Now Jupiter being gaseous usually doesn't show anything for very long. Things like this would normally just disappear. That's a testament to how much energy these pieces of material carried when they smashed into Jupiter's atmosphere that they were actually visible for days and weeks around the surface of Jupiter as Jupiter would rotate. Then of course eventually they just faded in and now are just part of Jupiter. But that's one of the comets that bears her name one comet that she discovered that impacted Jupiter in 1993. So let's go ahead and finish up with our summary and what we've looked at here is that Carolyn Shoemaker was born in New Mexico in 1929. She did not have formal training in astronomy and didn't and didn't actually begin her astronomical career until 1980. But during that time she discovered dozens of comets and hundreds of asteroids, including one that bears her name that crashed into Jupiter in 1993. So that concludes our discussion of Carolyn Shoemaker. And this also concludes our 
a study of women in astronomy for now as this uh, set of videos will be uh, paused and we will move on. As I said, I was going to go through about astronomers born 1929 or before and that's where we're going to stop. So I will be starting a new series next week at on this on this same day. So until then, have a great day, everyone. And I will see you in class.